On today's episode of Secrets to Scaling Your E-Commerce Brand, I got a chance to chat with Arsh from Thrillx Designs. We talked all about user experiences, user interfaces, the ones that we love, the ones that we don't love, the reason why some brands are just so great. And let me give you a bit of a clue. It comes down to the user experience. And so we talk all about user experience, how you can actually improve your user experience, the tried and true tests that Arsh and his team at Thrillx have run that are basically tried and true methods of upping your, first of all, user experience, and number two, then upping your conversion rate in general. So really, really great conversation that we had. You guys are not going to want to miss this one. Hey guys, Jordan West back with another episode of Secrets to Scaling Your E-Commerce Brand. Guys, also just, you know, for, for your sake as listeners, you know, I chose this name ages, years and years ago when everyone called e-com, e-com. And now everyone says DTC. And it's just confusing for me, guys. You know, after all these years, I, I still want to call them e-com brands. And then people are like, nah, that's an Amazon brand. It's an e-com brand. Anyway, still secrets to scaling your e-commerce brand. Still talking about D2C. Still absolutely pumped. Today, I have Arsh on from Thrillx Designs. Arsh, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me, Jordan. I'm excited. Yes, absolutely. I don't know if you guys can tell the, the high quality that we have right now. It's because we're both in Canada recording this. Arsh all the way over in <laughs> T.O. Toronto, which is really like, you know, our big city in Canada. You know, it's, it's our New York. And I'm, I'm way over in, you know, nice little Vancouver, having a great time, beautiful weather, you know, beautiful mountains, all that kind of stuff. Arsh, for people who don't know anything about you or anything about Thrillex, tell us just a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, hundred percent. So I'm the founder of Thrillex. We are a UX, UI design and conversion rate optimization firm based here in Toronto, Canada. And, you know, just kind of stepping back a little bit, prior to starting Thrillex, I worked at a lot of big companies and agencies here in Canada. My background has always been originally in marketing and sales. And then I decided to pivot my career into UX and UI design, worked for several of the world's top companies here in Canada, and did UX, UI design work for, you know, several Fortune 500, 1,000 brands. And I started realizing this trend amongst all of these companies' websites that they weren't really designed to their full potential, right? Mm. I noticed this trend of, you know, people made decisions based on guesswork rather than actual data-driven decisions and strategies. And my business background was a big part of that. And just realizing that, you know, design is much more than making things look pretty. It's actually about making money and hitting business goals. Absolutely. I mean, that matters, right? At the end of the day, and we talk about this on this podcast all the time, it actually doesn't like up your conversion rate on your website. Well, you, you know how you can up your conversion rate? Don't send cold traffic to your site, right? Like there's <laughs> yeah. certain things and that's not a great business outcome, right? So yeah. this is really great. And Arsh and I really connected on this before the podcast. We had a chat yesterday talking about how much it actually matters. The business outcome is really at the end of the day, what actually matters. And so having somebody in your corner who actually knows what that business outcome you know, should be is really great. Yeah, hundred percent agree with you. And you know, that kind of brings us into the main problem we solve, which I'm sure you're also very familiar with, which is this, we call it the leaky bucket syndrome at our, at our agency, right? This idea that investing in an unoptimized website is like putting water into a leaky bucket. Everyone chases traffic, but you know, the cost of acquiring customers has gone through the roof. And so we really try and answer that question of, how do we optimize the existing traffic on your website so that as you invest more into your digital marketing, your advertising, you can derive more value from those marketing dollars? Yeah, um, and yeah, that's, that's kind of what we've you know, focused on from, from day one at Thrillex, which is you know, business goals, data-driven design, and turning your website into a revenue uh, generating machine. So one of the things we were talking about yesterday and, and that I kind of want to dive into is that you're talking about user experience, right? We were talking about like, hey, we're going to talk UX and not necessarily just CRO, conversion rate optimization, right? Why is that? Like, why do we care more about user experience than, than CRO? Because I, I've often thought about them very similarly. And I think there's a huge difference. Yeah, 100%. So I think first and foremost, it has to do with the actual like just stepping outside of UX design, there's also the UI design piece that a lot of people overlook. At the core of conversion rate optimization, you know, people typically look at things like anxiety, motivation, and, and reducing certain elements of those, right, to increase conversion rate. 
I think UX as a whole and UI design, that part comes in when you're really looking at the overall experience of the website. So let me yeah. give you an example. If the website is not designed in a certain way, it doesn't look appealing. People take notice of that, right? It kind of degrades the quality of the brand. And that also has impacts on the conversion rate. You know, we were doing user tests recently for one of our clients where we're doing remote user testing, right? We're asking people, what are your first impressions of the site? Does the messaging resonate with you? And those elements didn't really appeal to them. And that really impacted that client's conversion rate, right? So I mm. think it's just looking more holistically around not getting too granular about anxiety, motivation, but looking at the full picture, right? It, it comes down to messaging. It comes down to the overall design of the site and combining those factors together to ultimately build your website in the best way. Totally. I want to give you guys a little anecdote here, and I'm sure a lot of you are in the same sort of position. I'm so sorry for you Android users who are out there. Absolutely good good for you. I am one of the, the many Apple sheep. You know why? Because their UI is gorgeous. I yeah. love everything that they do. I just bought an Apple Watch because I was like, you know what? I just don't like the UI of Fitbit. It just wasn't working for me. And I love everything that Apple does is that. They focus so much on the user interface and making it ridiculously simple and easy to navigate that that is the product that I want to buy every single time, right? Sure, some of you guys might like all of the crazy functionality that you can do on an Android and that you can do on a PC and the locked ecosystem you know, of Apple is, is interesting, but they've done such a good job of making me actually want to use their product. And a lot of you, a lot of your websites, people don't want to use. They're just going there because they have to. Amazon has done an incredible job from a UI perspective, right? You know exactly what to do. You know exactly which, which buttons to press because they've set it up so beautifully. So I just wanted to give just a, just a quick aside of why UI and UX. And UI, then, you know, the user interface then becomes that user experience, which essentially yeah. those two things together actually inform your CRO, right? They're going 100%. to make your site more buy your your product more buyable and people actually buy into your product yeah where do you start where's some of that low-hanging fruit arsh yeah that's a great question and then just kind of touching on the previous point as well i have to say i agree with you but i am an android user as well so i you uh, know i could just kind of tell i'm like you know you're you're <laughs> you know you're in this like sort of development space i'm like you're probably not an apple user and that's okay you know i'm more yeah. of the sheep and i'm okay being one of the sheep <laughs> no i definitely agree with you awesome so I think, you know, one of the, the easiest places to start, Jordan, is messaging, right? I, I do a lot of website audits at our agency, and that's one of the ways that we've grown as well, is doing free website audits for, for clients, whether it's through cold email or even just, you know, inbound leads coming to us. I always see this consistent trend of, you know, people getting too hung up in jargon and using industry terminology that people coming onto their website don't really know what it means, right? Uh, you always have to put it in the perspective of what's, who's your target audience, right? Who's visiting your website? And the rule that we always use is opt for clarity rather than, you know, using jargon and complex language. And I think this is a big factor that many people overlook. So I would say that's one of the low-hanging fruits that people can change on their website straight away straight away. Yeah, it's super interesting you bring that up. Donald Miller is an absolute genius when it comes to this. If anyone's known Donald Miller for any time, I knew him back when he used to write other books. He used to write all these great books when I was a teenager that I absolutely loved. And then he became a business dude. And I started reading his business books. And one of his first ones was building a story brand. And a huge part of that is stop using language nobody else knows except for you. Go through your website, get rid of like 80% of everything on there because no one cares, right? Does it pass the grunt test when you come there? Do people understand within like a millisecond what you are doing, right? And if you're going to use industry jargon, absolutely not, right? And think about that. You know, I know 30 or 40% of you guys out there own agencies who listen to this, right? Same thing on your agency website, right? Do not expect your customers to be nearly as sophisticated as you are when it comes to all of this different stuff, you know? Arsh and I here are using UX, UI, TRO, blah, 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 all these like different terms. And I got to remember to myself, oh yeah, not everyone is familiar with these acronyms as we are. So we just, I, that was a great example. We just like literally did the thing that we're telling you not to do. So, so there you yeah. go. 
Sorry, Ars, continue on. It's low hanging fruit yeah. is where we are. Yeah, hundred percent. So I would say, you know, first and foremost is messaging that piece. And then I also think another low hanging fruit is the, what we call the anatomy of a high converting landing page or a high converting website. First thing I just want to make clear is that there's this misconception that best practices will always lead to high conversion rates. And if that was the case, everyone would be converting at eight to 10%, right? So that's definitely not the case. But I think there's certain core principles that every website should include in order to have that baseline level, right? So cool. yeah. a couple of things would be, you know, social proof above the fold, right? Immediately building trust with customers, keeping in mind that majority of people will not reach uh, the bottom of your website page. What do you mean by social proof specifically? Yeah, great question. So social proof is anything like reviews, testimonials, featured publications, you know, the biggest question I get a lot is what if I don't have any good, you know, featured publications, for example, I'm not featured in a lot of places. My thing is always some social proof is always better than no social proof, right? So try and get yep. reviews to the best of your ability, even if it's just giving people your product for free and getting those reviews, it just goes a long way to build trust with customers, right? So What's that's what I mean by social proof. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. I just wanted to make sure that we were on the same page. I wasn't sure if it was like, Hey, like reviews specifically, or if it's as right. seen on in these areas, an interesting thought. And sorry, I don't normally step in quite as much, but I'm just like loving this conversation so much. Yeah. So w one of the interesting phenomenons, I totally forget what this phenomenon is. I wish I had like, you know how Rogan's got his Jamie that just like feeds him stuff all the time. I got to have a Jamie, <laughs> you know, that just is feeding me stuff as I'm thinking about it. But I'm not Rogan. So <laughs> though I did run into yesterday, I was chatting with a brand who was able to get Rogan on as an investor. Oh, wow. As a celebrity investor. I'm like, you can't get any higher. There's no one who's got <laughs> more in North America who has more eyeballs or, or ears than Rogan does. Anyway, going back to this, the phenomenon of when, totally forget what this phenomenon is called, when one person is looking up and then suddenly all that you can do is everyone there starts to look up whether or not there's something there. That is a very similar phenomenon that we have on the social signals towards our brand, right? As seen on CTV, sorry, I'm using a Canadian one, NBC <laughs> as seen on here, right? It's like, oh, oh, they, they thought that it was good. Okay, well, it must be good for me, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. funny how we do this. I do it all the time. Like, I will not buy things that generally my friends aren't recommending to me or that I don't see other people that are similar to me doing unless I want to make a statement. So hundred uh, <laughs> percent, it's, it's a saying of people don't care what you or your company thinks or says they care what other people are saying, right? It's that basic level of human psychology that is consistent across all sites and just in our day-to-day -day lives as well. Right. So totally, yeah. which is why whitelisting is so important when running ads, right? Yeah. It's so important because it's like, why are you spending all of this money running from you telling everyone how great you are or running from an influencer telling people how great you are? Like immediately you're going to see an ROI there. Yeah. So I think outside of social proof above the fold, you know, it's having a very clear, crystal clear value proposition right at the top of your website, right? Again, coming to that idea of messaging, majority of people don't scroll past that top hero section. So just making sure that that above the fold experience is optimized for your target audience. And then I think as you scroll down the, the website page, it's focusing on things like benefits over features, right? What do I actually gain as a user? That's the core question that a lot of brands need to start answering, which is what's in it for me, right? Do I save time from your solution? Do I save money, right? Or yeah. how does that solution actually benefit me in my day-to-day -day life? Making sure that that core messaging is clear throughout the site and then complementing that with the design, right? So making sure that imagery reinforces your core value proposition. I think when those two things go hand in hand, it goes a long way for for conversion rate and just the overall user experience. So let me let me kind of wrap this up for people. So just for, for where you're at so far, right? So right now what we've got, these are some tried and true sort of methods, right? So we've got social proof above the fold, above the, we'll call it above the scroll on the phone. Um, mm -hmm. We've got social proof sitting there. Then right over top of that, in the hero image, we've actually got that clear value prop, right? For a lot of you out there that listen to this, I know you're brand people. You're not necessarily product people who are just solving a specific problem. 
So figuring out what that value prop is, is incredibly important and testing out what that value prop is. Again, you know, in the age of AI, we can, we can feed that in and, and it's incredible what ChatGPT will come up with when it comes to like, Hey, well, you know, what kind of value prop actually would resonate, right? And then testing out some of these different value props. Probably a lot of you know what your value props are, but even the smartest people out there can always use a little bit of help. And then underneath that, really making sure that we're focusing on benefits and not features, right? Incredibly, incredibly important. Can you just give me some examples of benefits versus features just so people understand exactly what, what the difference is? Yeah, 100%. So I would say, you know, great example of benefits would be save, save time that you spend on this is, this is just an example for like a B2B company, right? Save time spending on that you spend on Excel tasks by 40%, right? Quantifying the value that you actually gain as a user saying that I save time by 40% yes. versus a feature would be our solution does, you know, task management automates your, your Excel flows or whatever the, like the fe specific features are for that solution, right? So just, again, this idea of, can you com convey what the actual benefit is? What do I actually gain as a user? And can you quantify that value by giving stats or statistics and making sure that your offer is very clear? Yeah, 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 awesome. That's great. Back to best practices. Arsh, I know I'm, I'm throwing you for a loop here, jumping in everywhere, which way that I can here. What else? What else is best practice when it comes to this? Because I'm loving what you're putting down so far. Yeah, so I would say, you know, outside of just doing these best practice things, actually talk with your users, right? You talked about low hanging fruit. I think one of the biggest low hanging fruits is running surveys on your website. After somebody purchases a product, ask them, why did you purchase our product today? Right? Yeah. Or ask them- What a great question uh, to ask. Why did you purchase today? Like, it's, it's so, so simple. simple. Yeah, exactly. No one does it. No, one, no one's doing it, right? Like. And you can get, you can, this is marketing gold, gold, right? Why'd you purchase today? I don't know for my, <laughs> because my, and, and, and you'll find incredible use cases that you had no clue were actually out there just by asking the question. 100%. It's, it's basically this idea of, you know, balancing quantitative insights with qualitative insights, right? Without the qualitative side of things, you can actually inject that copy that your customers are giving you back into your website experience, which I think is definitely an under leveraged component of CRO and just UX design as a whole. And the other side of that is what stopped you from purchasing today or almost stopped you from purchasing, right? Like that, what I was that? I love that question too. These are moment of hesitation. Brilliant. Yeah. Exactly. And, and we just get insane insights from, from surveys. I think another low hanging fruit is we use a tool called user brain where you can actually conduct remote user tests. So you set up a bunch of screening questions and then ask questions to users, complete strangers coming onto your website. For example, what are your first impressions landing on our website, right? What do you think of the overall experience, the copy, the above the fold? Now you can scroll on the site. What do you think of the rest of the experience? And get them to do a series of different tasks, get them to actually purchase a product on your site, get them to add a product to their cart and really seeing how they navigate. Because the best practices will only get you so far, but you have to supplement that with actual data-driven strategies, which is the surveys, the user tests, to really get the most out of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This, see, this is a really interesting conversation. I'm so happy that we're having it right now because CRO, right, which is kind of like the lagging indicator of all of this stuff that we're talking about, is about how humans interact with your website, right? This is why data alone, right? Like, like we talked about quantitative data alone will not get you all the way when people are like, just make database decisions. Well, which data? Like just click data? Because what's that going to tell us exactly? Does that tell us that, that, you know, this mom had searched, you know, had talked to her friends for, you know, 10 different friends about what the best baby clothes to buy was before they landed on our website? No, it does not tell us that. How do we get that kind of data and start to actually understand our customers. And remember that our customers are actually humans that are purchasing. It's not bots going along and, and purchasing. Not that we know of yet. Um, though eventually, I mean, you'll have your own personal bot that will just go, you know, buy for you. That's an aside. <laughs> so Arsh, when we're looking at, you know, most of the people who are listening to this podcast are Shopify users, right? Most mm -hmm. of them are on there. 
Where is that very first page that you would actually start to look at the UX and the UI and start to make changes on? Yeah, great question. So I would say it all starts with the homepage first and foremost, making sure that your homepage experience is actually optimized for your target user and they know where to go from your homepage, right? Because not everyone who click will click on an ad who sees it, they won't always click on it, right? They might search up your company on Google, go to your homepage and then go to that experience. And so that should be unified with your entire brand, their messaging, everything should be cohesive. Yeah. Then there's a the question of looking at your top performing pages, right? So what are your product pages that are getting the most amount of traffic that are generating you the most amount of revenue and are the most profitable for you? And yeah. then focusing on those, those pages by doing the things I mentioned, which are surveys, user tests, and even installing a tool like Hotjar and watching recordings, seeing how far people scroll on your page and getting insights from that, right? Because at the end of the day, you can kind of guess different things, best practices, but you really have to look at the data to see where are people dropping off and where are opportunities to convert more people. And then you yeah. can start running tests and, and really get into the weeds of it. Yeah, absolutely. Arsh, before we kind of start to, to wrap things up, you talked about doing free audits for companies before. If somebody's listening to this and they're like, man, I just want Arsh to take a look at what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm, you know, maybe I'm not implementing some of these best practices. Maybe they can see something that I can't. Where would they go to, to be able to apply for one of those? Yeah, hundred percent. So it's just thrillxdesign.com slash free website audit, free dash website dash audit. Awesome. And we'll make sure to have that down in the show notes, guys. Arsh, I got to ask you the question that I ask everyone who comes on the podcast. What is your secret to scaling? I'm a bit biased, but I would have to say conversion rate optimization. You know, I just see too many companies you know, pour money down the drain and chase traffic and get more traffic to their website. And it's their, their websites are just not optimized for conversions. Right. Yeah. And my yeah. whole thing is that if you put yourself in a position where your website is optimized for conversions and you're constantly doing testing, you're constantly improving your site, it just helps you scale way more faster. Yeah. Right. Because you're, yeah. as you start investing more in advertising and getting more traffic, the revenue you generate is also amplified, right? And the ROI you generate is amplified. So I always say that the best way to scale is really focusing on, you know, CRO. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I didn't expect like that different of an answer, but I really appreciate <laughs> you kind of walking us through all of that there. Arch, I've got three more questions for you. I hope that you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. First question for you, favorite tool or app that you're using right now? I would have to say Hotjar for sure. It's a very common one. The biggest thing with Hotjar though, is that, you know, it's, it's hard to get insights from Hotjar. Like you just look at a, a heat map or scroll map without that CRO side, it's hard to pull insights. So I like to normally supplement that with, with user brain to actually get, you know, remote user test and, and get qualitative feedback. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. Second question for you, favorite podcast or audiobook that you're listening to right now? Yeah, good question. I would say Jason Swank's podcast, the digital agency podcast, always interesting listening to, you know, other agency owners in the space and, and how they've, how they've navigated the landscape. Yeah, guys, agency guys who are listening to this, Jason Swank, good buddy. He is awesome. When we first started our agency, I don't even know how many years ago, I was part of Jason's mastermind for a couple of years course. and it was Phenomenal. I actually just saw a message from one of the old mastermind members that just messaged me about something on LinkedIn. And I was like, man, the connections that we made through being a part of that mastermind, we sort of outgrew the group that we were in at the time, the specific group. And so we, we stopped, but Jason Swank, what a great dude. Jason, if you're listening to this, I mean, you're probably not, but you are, you're awesome. I appreciate you so much. And I got to be on his podcast at one point, which was so fun. That was years ago. Oh, nice. I'd love to go back on it. Arsh, last question for you. You just found out that you have a year to live. What changes? Oh, wow. I would say traveling for sure. Traveling and spending time with family. I, I bet that's a very common answer, but I think, you know, every agency owner goes through that, the common phase of, you know, just working crazy number of hours, right? And spending time on your business. And I think, you know, it's very easy to get consumed by that. So I had one year to live, I would definitely spend more time with family and travel the world for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is a very common answer because it's true. 
Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's one of those things. It's like, I just love it. I love to hear. And I, I asked this question for, for, for all of our sakes to remember, Hey guys, we're like way more than just business people here, right? We're actual humans that are having this incredible human experience in this life. And, and it's really important to remember that there's so much more outside of providing services for people and selling things online. Those are wonderful. And we make people's lives so much better because of that. But there's also this like innate desire to be a little bit free, right? And I feel like this question lots of times gets to that. Arch, for people who want to connect with you, where's the best place for them to do that? Yeah, so you can connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm pretty active there. You can also email me. It's arsh at thrillxdesign.com. And our website is also www.thrillxdesign.com. So you can always reach out through there through our contact form. Awesome, guys. And remember, I will put all of this, and I me mean, not personally, but somebody on my team will put all of these things that we've talked about down in the show notes. Thanks again so much, everyone, for listening. Thanks, Jordan.